Over the years, we have seen 3D packages get better and evolve in different areas to match the needs of game developers, VFX artists, and so on. In today's video, I want to discuss how much Blender evolved in terms of its simulation and VFX tools in addition to its features. So we're gonna compare it to the best out there, which is SideFX Houdini. Before delving into the comparison, it is crucial to highlight the distinction between them. Blender emerges as a one package solution for every stage of production, whereas Houdini is a more specialized software, meaning that Blender covers more areas compared to Houdini. For instance, Blender offers extensive support for manual asset creation, so with its arsenal of modeling tools combined with its sculpting and texturing capabilities, you can create objects and characters in various types and styles. These features can be practically beneficial for movies and video game projects, as demonstrated in the 2020 film The Midnight Sky, where Blender was used to design and craft the impressive ether ship showcased in the film. As for rigging and character animation, both solutions offer tools and features for it, but Blender focuses more on it since it is a 3D animation software in the first place, as it provides artists with the means to bring their creations to life by manually rigging and animating expressive movements and performances. And we have seen this in many open Blender movies, in addition to many, many projects, whether it be in VFX or animation. Houdini, on the other hand, is a powerful and industry-standard leading node-based software, which is a way of creating models and animations procedurally by generating them automatically based on the set of rules and parameters that you can build within what is known as a node tree, eliminating the need of manual animation or editing models by hand, and with the ability to apply changes to them without damaging the end result. Just keep in mind that Houdini is a popular choice among professionals in the film industry to create complex simulations and visual effects. The possibilities here are endless, so we can't mention all of them. But we have the likes of water and fire simulations, magic effects, as well as generating procedural environments, dynamic particle systems, and destruction effects. To give you an example, in the case of the dragon scene in Game of Thrones, Houdini was the sole creative force behind the spectacular visuals, as it was used for every aspect of the shot, from the destruction animations of the ships to the dynamic fluid simulations of the ocean, and even the fire projectiles unleashed by the dragon. Some of these shots were also rendered within Houdini as well. Keep in mind that as a general package, Blender does have those features as well, so it is capable of competing with Houdini to a certain extent, or is it? Alright, before we continue, if you are interested in delving deeper into creating high quality VFX stuff, realistic visuals and even motion graphics, then SideFX Houdini is a no-brainer to create all sorts of particles and visual effects, and if you want to jump into Houdini, then this class by Shahzad Ahmed will get you up to speed. This is an absolute beginner class that is structured specifically for people who never use the software. Throughout this 15-hour class, you will be touching on almost all major features, tools, and functions of Houdini, from getting familiar with the interface to flip fluid simulations. So you're gonna learn about geometry grouping, geometry attributes, how to code, how to use the node editor, and how to create awesome particle effects. And if you are interested in Blender, then there are a ton of classes about it too. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a one month free subscription to Skillshare Premium. After that, you can cancel at any time you want. Now back to the video. Based on what we previously mentioned, there are three key areas of overlap between Houdini and Blender. And these are mainly procedural animation, procedural modeling, and rendering. So let's start with the first. While Blender's physics capabilities are good, Especially with the progress we have seen recently, they still don't match the level of detail and complexity offered by Houdini in terms of procedural animation. Houdini's advanced physical algorithms and solvers, for instance, enable accurate and realistic simulations of rigid body behavior. By offering more options and control in simulation factors like mass, inertia, forces, and collisions to replicate various physical-based phenomena including car crashes, destruction effects, and cloth simulation. 
and if you take an honest look at what it can do, you will be surprised. Houdini also excels in particle simulations by offering a diverse array of particle systems and solvers. These capabilities enables us to create a greater variety of particle behaviors and directions, which can be further transformed into other effects such as smoke or energy. This can be for example seen in the Doctor Strange movies, the iconic portals used by the Sorcerer Supreme to traverse dimensions were all done inside Houdini, and the swirling patterns and dynamic movements were all crafted using Houdini's particle solvers. To explain this further, let's consider the example of wind. In Blender, the control over wind is limited to parameters like power and flow. In contrast, Houdini provides nodes such as the pop wind node, which offers alone more than 10 parameters solely for controlling the wind. This level of control empowers VFX artists to fine-tune the wind's behavior and achieve more precise and better looking visuals, with the ability to influence them however they desire. Now, with the introduction of simulation nodes in Blender, and despite being relatively new, they already offer a solid foundation and a glimpse of what is yet to come. So the idea behind simulation nodes is to cover the various simulation aspects of Blender, including particles, collisions for objects interacting with each other, in addition to cloth simulation, and so on. Blender simulation nodes offer real-time and interactive capabilities, providing you with a dynamic and responsive workflow. Being physics-based, these nodes allow you to create animations by simply moving objects around, similar to the experience in video games, and without the need for any baking time, which is really important, especially if you are working under a deadline. So, to understand this better, let's look at the particles example when working with Blender particles, which are usually the core of Houdini's animations. One noticeable drawback in Blender is how limited it is to change the particles' movements. You can only influence the animations through the side menu and limited force fields like wind, meaning that sometimes they look dull with any rich or complex movements or behaviors. Blender simulation nodes addresses this core issue of particles, which enables us to create a vast range of physically accurate complex simulations, meaning artists can use an infinite number of node combinations, just like Houdini, to create an incredible range of particle animations and behaviors, which is super cool. These particles can be then used in the likes of motion graphics or can be used as a base to produce, for example, smoke simulations or magic attacks. So as you can see, Houdini still maintains an advantage over Blender simulation nodes due to its extensive collection of nodes and expansive range of options, which is obvious. So as a result, simulation nodes are not yet as powerful, I mean in contrast with Houdini. However, even with its current state, simulation nodes still provide a considerable array of nodes. This allows for the creation of significantly more expressive results. This is the case compared to the previous system, which is limited to only basic settings like adjusting the rotation and velocity, unlike simulation nodes where you can build big node trees and the potential for more complex and remarkable simulations. With the addition of geometry nodes, Blender has started to narrow the gap between its procedural animation and modeling capabilities, similar to Houdini. Artists can now create animations and models using a similar procedural approach to Houdini by combining nodes to achieve the desired results. This node-based workflow in Blender enables artists to make changes and edits to their animations and models at any point in the process, providing flexibility and control similar to Houdini's procedural methodology. Nevertheless, Blender still lacks a number of nodes and options that Houdini offers, and it falls short in certain capabilities. One notable example is when it was used in The Lion King in 2019, where Houdini was used to generate procedural geometry and layouts for the production. A prime example of this is the canyon that serves as the backdrop for the Wild Beast Stampede scene, which was constructed using modular cliff pieces that were sculpted by hand, then merged and joined together using procedural geometry, and this was done with the help of noises and masks. In contrast, Blender offers limited choices, with just a few noise textures that lack extensive editing capabilities, 
but since Blender offers manual scripting and modeling tools, it can still compete to produce closer results. It is just that it won't be procedural and it will take a longer time for now at least. It is also important to note that manual editing enables you to create any desired 3D model, such as characters unlike procedural modeling, which has a lot of limitations, but it is a faster approach in certain contexts. When it comes to rendering, both Houdini and Blender offer powerful capabilities. So Houdini uses the Mantra Render Engine, while Blender uses Cycles. Each one of them can achieve physically based and photorealistic results, each with strengths and advantages. But the choice is first and foremost comes to personal preferences and which tool you want to use. It is also important to note that both support third-party engines such as V-Ray, Octane, and you can get the same results in both. Also, Blender has Eevee, which is a real-time render engine that can be used for different purposes. Also, Blender and Houdini being popular software, they both support various file formats, allowing you to easily move between various 3D tools. This compatibility also extends to real-time game engines, as showcased in the production of assets for the Lion King movie. Similarly, both can render scenes to be composited either within Blender or specialized compositing tools. However, Houdini still has an edge in this area due to its integration with big studios. For instance, Wada Digital utilized a combination of tools, including their proprietary Synapse tool and Houdini, to create complex fire and water simulations that interact and affect each other. A notable example of this is the battle between Daenerys and Euron's fleet in Blackwater Bay from the Game of Thrones series, which demonstrates how strong and powerful Houdini is within the Hollywood industry. While Blender is a powerful and versatile software, it's not as commonly used in large studios for high-end productions compared to a software such as Houdini. But it is getting there, because Blender is regularly used in small and mid-sized VFX studios and even sometimes on big projects. For instance, in the movie Spring from Blender Studios, the simulations were done using Blender, of course, showcasing its capability to deliver good results, especially considering that it is a free software. The primary reasons for this difference is the historical dominance of software such as Houdini when it comes to being used in the industry which has established its pipelines and workflows and many studios build tools around it. Additionally, Blender still lacks some VFX tools, I mean those offered by Houdini. However, it's worth mentioning that Blender's capabilities are constantly being expanded and it is being used in the VFX industry step by step and little by little till hopefully it will reach a status of being industry standard. So this does it for today. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you guys very much for watching again and I will see you in the next one.